this here in this video what we are going to see about what we are going to see is about the algorithm and its features uh, what is meant by an algorithm uh, where it is used how efficiently we can use it in order to achieve our target that is what we are going to see in this so what is an algorithm an algorithm is nothing but a finite set of instructions or logic written in order to accomplish a certain predefined task what do you mean by that suppose my logic is to find the sum of n natural number how i am going to do it so what are the steps to be followed for that in order to achieve the in order to get the sum of n natural numbers so first i have to get the input for a uh, how uh, for how many number of values i am going to add the uh, get the sum and then say for example up to 10 values then i how how i am going to add first i am going to add one and then with that i am going to add two and then with the sum i am going to add three and so on till 10 so this is what my uh, logic then finally i will uh, output the uh, Uh, of uh, that answer this is what that target so in order to do that how i am going to present that like a story so first get the input and then put it in a loop or uh, repeated steps i will add and finally output the result so this is what the set of instruction what i mean by a finite set of instruction so algorithm is not the complete code or program it is just the logic core logic of the program which can be expressed either as a informal high level description as pseudo code like in step 1 get the input in step 2 make the variable sum equal to 0 then in step 3 uh, repeat the following steps till you reach that like that you will be writing step in, in way of step 1 step 2 step 3 and so on that you can call it as a pseudo code or you can represent in pictorically which we call it as a flow chart so every algorithm must satisfy the following properties so all the algorithm must have the following five input five properties what are they it must have a zero or more inputs an algorithm may not have input also okay so that is also there or more than one input also it may have then output but there will be definitely one output will be there then definiteness every step of the algorithm must have must be clear and well defined without that it should not be that uh, if you are going to assign a variable and if it is necessary for that program only you have to do that or else you should not do that that is what a definiteness it must be a clear each and every step finiteness the algorithm should produce a proper result finite number of steps five steps means all the five steps should be that if a program needs definite five steps means all the five steps five things should be there in that algorithm then correctness every step of the algorithm must generate a correct output okay this is what these are the properties of an algorithm then uh, i have i have developed an algorithm but how i can say my algorithm is efficient so for example if you uh, say uh, three of my friends are writing a code uh, for factorial finding the factorial all of them are uh, doing the same uh, all of writing a program for finding the factorial so one person may be using do loop another person may be using for loop another person may be using while loop and the introduction of variables using of variables may be different in each program but if i give a, to find the factorial of number 5 definitely all the output will be 120 okay but how i can say which is more efficient that comes the analysis of algorithm i must know when there are three program whose program is more efficient so how will you analyze a algorithm so based on the time execution time at what time it gives output whose output is coming first and then space amount of space it occupies one person may be 1 mb another person may be 2 mb and another person may be 1.5 so which will i consider the one with the uh, lesser memory space will be considered to be the more efficient so here our optimization is less time and less space so that is what our thing so here 
uh, efficiency of an algorithm can be analyzed in two different stages that is before implementation and after implementation so before we call it as before implementation we call it as an a priori analysis so efficiency of an algorithm is measured by assuming all the factors example processor speed are constant and have no effect on the implementation it is assumption we will do because one person's process speed may be speed uh, more another person's computer may be slow so irrespective of that the program should have the same output so with that in mind we will, we will uh, we do the a priori analysis an algorithm is said to be efficient and fast if it takes less time to execute and consumes less memory space that is what we call it as a uh, performance a uh, good performance so a good performance can be measured by using these two properties they are time complexity and space complexity we will see what is a space complexity a space complexity is nothing but the amounts of space occupied by any program along with the execution time so it will be a program will consist of a declaration of variables constants then many loops statements print out statements output or input statement all, all everything will comes under the program instruction the variables constant values temporary values then the execution after completing the program when you execute it occupies some space so that will be called as execution space so accelerated space is nothing but this execution space and input space is nothing but these together considered as an input space so memory usage while execution how how it occupies the memory so while during the execution what happens a compiled version of the instruction will be formed so for that some memory space will be there and then data space actual allocation of the the space occupied by the variables and constants so that will be considered as a data space then the environmental stack memory stack will be used for internal storage when your program is execution for example let us consider this example a function within the a function b function is there so after the hum statement b is called immediately the controller jumps to b and the ex lines program statements in that b will be executed and when it sees a return statement it jumps to the main program here we call it as a as the main program it comes to this and immediately started executing the line next to b this is called program sequence so how the program sequence is maintained when it jumps when uh, after this statement when b is called before it jumps to that some of the variables so for example these are all the, the values in those variables will be pushed into the memory stack and the return address after it comes from where it has to start so that return address also will be pushed into the memory stack so when there is a return statement this address should be popped and put it into the program counter program counter from where again the in program counter the address of the next instruction will be placed which is popped from the memory stack and placed in the program counter and now it points to s1 now the execution starts from s1 and the sequential execution continues this is how the correct sequential order any sequential order of the program is maintained so for this it uses memory stack so the memory usage while execution which is nothing but we call it as an axillary space in the previous slide here so input space is this program instruction and variables the memory usage while execution is the space occupied by the compiled version of the instruction and the environmental the memory stack memory used by this memory stack and the data space which is nothing but the variables and the constants so how will you calculate the space complexity for calculating the space complexity we should know the value of memory used by different types of data variables which generally varies for different operating system but the method for calculating the space complexity remains the same so let us consider this is for c++ i have taken for c++ let us consider int int occupies 4 bytes and double occupies 8 bytes and you can see bool character all those occupies 1 byte so with this in mind we will see with one example how a space complexity can be calculated let us consider this example only simple only these two codes uh, a plus b plus c is that equal to a plus b plus c so for a since it is given integer already we have seen for int it occupies 4 bytes 
So this four bytes for this four bytes for this four bytes and for Z four bytes and plus returning the value to the main program that also occupies four bytes. So if you say four n n here you can give n n is nothing but number of variables. So four into n integer which is nothing but here already it is one two three four plus this is a constant the return value so which is nothing but 20 bit so only these two codes memory space occupied by these variables is 20 bytes now we'll consider uh, space complexity of this small program here this is a function sum it adds uh, values in the array so how it will going to add now let us consider up to n number of values in the array and you pass the value n which is the length of this array both you are passing array as well as its length also you are passing so till uh, 0 to length what this will do this is adding so if you consider how to calculate the space complexity of this in the above code 4 into n bytes of space is required for the array if you take this array a a will consist of a number of bytes that is each since it is an integer each value say a of 0 a of 1 a of 2 a of 0 will consist of 4 bytes a of 1 needs 4 bytes and so on till n because the length is n so 4 into n bytes of space is required for just for this array itself and then 4 bytes for each where here there is a variable x and this is a variable i and then this is a variable n so 1 2 3 so 4 bytes is for x n i plus for the return value after added that value will be written so if you calculate that 4 n which is for array plus 16 for this 4 4 4 and for return value 16 so this will be the complexity of this so just keep on increasing if the value of n is 5 then it will be 4 into 5 if the value of uh, n is 10 then it is 4 into 10 so it keeps on depending upon the value of n the space complexity of this increases the memory requirement will be increasing so linearly based on n it keeps on increasing if n is small value uh, memory space occupied also small so since it increases memory occupation increases linearly with increase in the input value we call it as a linear space complexity so similarly we can have quadratic and other complex space complexity as well as the complexity of an algorithm increases we will see all those things in the next video